Hi, this is Mike Madden and Laddie Chapman. We're going on an adventure today. We've got our gear ready, our, our boots here, and a flashlight. And what are we going to see today, Laddie? Only one flashlight. I hope you'll share that with yes, me, Yes, I Mike. will. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I think we're going to see some caves, but I'm not sure exactly uh, what, uh, except it's going to be underground. Uh, Cherney Merrillville Caves can be found on the web if you want to check it out. We don't know what we're going to find for sure, but I'm hoping we don't get too muddy. And thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you later. here is the first Mantua County Park and it was established in 1963. Uh, it was bought from property that was owned by Adolf Cherney. That's why it's referred to as Cherney Maribel Caves County Park. That was part of the deal. And uh, 21 years later our Wisconsin Speleological Society members, some of them, uh, discovered the cave February 5th, 1984. Hmm. And in 1990, uh, on Halloween, uh, some of these cavers broke into the largest room in the cave, which had bats. And that's the biggest single rock to come out of the cave. Now it looks real natural, and it was sitting on the edge up there, but then we decided we wanted to landscape that more flat, have a picnic area. And of course, this is a, a, like a construction site. It's work in progress. You know, it takes years of hard digging, a um, lot of work, tons of material have come out. Uh, West Twin River and it combines with the East Twin River and everyone's heard of two rivers that's where it goes if you keep on going it winds through Mantua County and ends up at two rivers where we're located here is northwestern Manitowa County we're about a mile or two from the city of Maribel Maribel exit is the closest and Denmark would be the next exit up used to be a spring house right here. And they had waterfall, bottling plant, you can see part of the wall up there, and over behind the trailer, when you go back up, is where they had the horse stables. They burned about 1916. The hotel was built by a Steinbrecher, and that was in 1900, Maribel Caves Hotel. And uh, around 1918, right in there, it discontinued as a hotel. Uh, I do believe it went into the 20s, but it's questionable. And uh, then it wasn't used until 1933 when a bar was used. And I remember the bar in the basement. And then in 1985 they had a very bad fire. And all you have is the gutted remains of the building. Al is our Wisconsin Speleological Society librarian. And he's an expert master at our WSS website at wisconsincaves.org. There are other caves in here. There are spots where the feather frost does come out. There is a smaller one called Aquaduce up in this area, and I'm not sure which one, but it's more of a crevice cave.
But this is what you call a square tube cave because it's real square like where New Hope Cave is called a round tube cave because it was carved out by water slowly over time. Not a hard part getting down. Yeah. <laughs> This road uh, is a former road where vehicles used, and uh, they brought in a backhoe. Mike Dembski, who was a former Mantua County Parks Director. Yes. And there were some tall trees here they took out, and they did away with the bank. We had to slope this so that the water drainage would go that way. And we put this in with the intention of having a nice loop trip in the park. and. Uh, was this just a regular little trail before, a footpath? It was uh, a trail. We had to put these in to divert water here. Uh, the trail actually stopped, and it was just a little footpath right here. And then you had to walk up here. And it was hard on people, and you didn't even know it because this was all trees here. And this was completely sealed off. And when they realized what they had here for a cave, uh, they and I start explaining to them, you know, what the potential could be, that's when they had this backhoe come in. And the big rock I showed you previously, that was actually picked up right about in that center part there. Okay. And there is another cave entrance down underneath here uh, that kind of lines up with another passage, but we, we doubt if it's big enough for a human to get through. The main entrance is back under that talus pile. Handicapped accessible it could be with grants, yeah, but we have to worry about the DNR because they have little endangered snails. So right now we're not interested in that. We're using the side entrance. There might be an entrance here, so you have three already. You've got the one that was the main one, the one we use, one here. We're pretty sure there's a sinkhole out in the field out here that we connects to it and the spring cave. So potentially there's five entrances to this cave system and it's called Maribel New Hope Cave. Today's a work day here, so that's why you see all the materials out, and uh, these are benches. This is really interesting. These old benches came from the Mantua County Fairgrounds, and one of the guys here was able to bring them here. And this is very typical, the old show caves, those that are open to the public, that you'd see out east, and you'd see benches like this. So it just made me smile when I see that. Plus, we have the walk-in entrance. And our tours are every third Sunday of every month from May through September and the second Sunday in October. We move it up a little, kind of connect it with the fall colors. And normally, and if we don't have any water problems, and that, here again, that can change, normally we're ready to go at 10 in the morning till about 3 in the afternoon. Sometimes 3.30, but I say 10 to 3 because you know how things can get pushed back. Uh, this here is the original entrance to the cave. It was just a real tiny opening way up on top and you couldn't even get a person in. But it was a real cold day and hoarfrost we noticed. And uh, so anyway, I wasn't there at the initial discovery. It was another uh, couple of our members. But they dug in a ways. There was a little dome. They kept on digging. Eventually we just kept digging the floor down and uh, in more recent times, I talked to Bay Ship up in Sturgeon Bay, and they were most generous in donating heavy plate steel. Now, we had an original gate on there further in. It was a shorter gate. It didn't hold. We had trouble with vandalism, and people come down here, and it's kind of a remote area here in northwestern Manitowoc County. So anyway, we bought this d gate. Nuker, Robert Thompson, who used to work for Tim Grawl, Sturgeon Bay, a marine uh, architect, uh, he's the one that fabricated it uh, courtesy of John Soule of uh, Northeast Wisconsin Technical Institute in Sturgeon Bay. And when they first broke into what we we'll call the Halloween room, there were bats already in there. Bats can go through an opening uh, size of a dime or larger, uh, depending on you know, the little brown bats in that. And uh, so we know there's got to be probably crevices here. Uh, this bluff here is about 25, 30 feet uh, high. And uh, so on this gate here, we got different latches that we can use depending on, on levels of security. And uh, it works real well. It's a very effective gate. 
we also, because of water problems, we create a little uh, spigot inside where we have buried pipe through here. And this is all part of the Niagara escarpment, the Dolo stone. Yeah, that it's goes an outlying part of the Niagara escarpment. And uh, over High Cliff State Park, that would really be the main Niagara escarpment. That runs right up into Door County. Absolutely, and right on around Niagara Falls in New York State. Um, this is the original county park from 1963 for Mantua County, uh, 75 acres. Uh, Adolph Cherney uh, was the one they worked out a deal with him, and he wanted that the Cherney name be in there as part of the deal. Was he a local farmer? Uh, he was a local um, contractor. All right. And uh, very well known, and Adolph Cherney, and so it's Cherney Maribel Caves County Park. And this is one of six what we call show caves in Wisconsin. Now this one and the one at Ledgeview, south of Chilton, are semi-developed. Uh, by that I mean you do have facilities for people to walk in. In fact, the door is seven foot, four inches high. Uh, we've done a lot of work modifying the rocks uh, for a pathway through the cave so you don't have to climb. There's more walking passage in this particular cave than any cave in the entire eastern half of Wisconsin. Horseshoe Bay Cave is longer up in Door County. It's 3,103 feet, but you've got to crawl through most of it. There are some big rooms. And this cave here was discovered on February 5th, 1984. nice features about this cave is since it's not a mine you never know what's around the next corner I mean tomorrow we could come in here and suddenly we find that there's a big opening behind here we've been to the tallest mountain Mount Everest with fancy mountain climbing equipment we've used expensive submarines gone down seven miles to the bottom of the Mariana Trench in Southeast Asia deepest point in the world underwater in the ocean Pacific Ocean We've had people go to the moon with fancy rockets. We've had 12 people on the moon. Well, there's areas in this cave that more people have been to the moon than have been visited by people right here in this cave. And to show you the mysteries, when we came through here, we thought this was basically going to be the Southeast Passage. There is where we'd crawl along the ceiling. Well, guess what? As we dug the floor down, bingo. Here is called the Hidden Passage. And this passage right behind you illustrates, and this is kind of like a dendritic passage. Uh, you can remember, like I mentioned before, like, it's like a tree laying on its side, and that's the main trunk. As you can see, it's big, 13 feet high. Here is a side branch, like of a tree. And this passage here goes in, I would say, about 75 feet. Normally, there's not water in it, but it is the spring of the year. It's May, and uh, sometimes we do get some water. Now, you probably are wondering, what does this passage look like before it was filled in, or before it was dug out? If you look right here, we've got a smaller side passage. You can see the banding of the sand, and you can get a little idea what this looks like. And I know from a fact, we've had a probe go in five feet here, so we know it goes at least five feet. Now, the reason it's flat and smooth like that is for a soil profile where we actually scrape down so that you could see the banding of the layering. So if this is a Vados or a stream-form cave, wash deposits would come in and form layers. And you could just see geologically the different layers of sand and how they've been deposited. Is this a tree root? Right that is here? a tree root, correct. And in Africa, I know that some tree roots go down 40 feet or more just to get water. And believe it or not, there's a cave not shown to tourists, but the largest underground lake in the world, of all places in the country of South Africa, which is generally arid. So we worked in here for a while today, and um, eventually this is probably going to connect up with the West Passage. This would be a typical passage for kids to explore. But at this point, we just discovered uh, a mysterious subterranean underground river. And right now, we're just so excited about that 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 has our priority. It's grabbed your attention. Oh, it's <laughs> in the water. We couldn't miss it. Good. 
I don't mind getting uh, wet. You can either. film as you're going along, you get an idea. Now, we're gonna let the, Brian and I'll let you go through. I'll tell you what, if you wanna walk first and, and film as you go, notice the subterranean river passing. This is a part of it, but not, it's a side branch. You wanna? No, you go ahead. And uh, anyway, this was parts, there were rooms here that you could break into, like here on the right, and this is very unusual in Wisconsin Cave to see a natural pillar, and that's it. And the little stalactites, see them up there on top? On this side, you can just see some of them. And they get much bigger and better in the back. We're going now into the West Passage. There's a former dirt level, see the layers? of uh, a uh, little calcite ridge. Now we're working with pumps and you can go so you don't have, I want you to have the, uh, the full view. Just take your time and go through your a winding stream passage and you can see the, the levels, the ridges. Very unusual to be in northeast Wisconsin and have a cave with this kind of walking passage. And we got cavers here that are working, uh, trying to pump water out. They're working on an underground dam. And you can hear the water falls in the background. And um, what we have here, where, where Al and them are going, before we go any further here, uh, this is Al, he's a Mantua County Alderman, he's uh, also on our board of directors, Wisconsin Speleological Society, and a couple volunteers, and Alex here, and, and this is the Lost Hammer Passage, and the passage splits here, and if you look down here, you can back up, it's got water now, but anyway, uh, this passage here continues on, and it may connect up with the other one that we're working on. And remember when I talked about how it's made like a show cave? This is a, another pulpit rock, nice flat rock. You stand up, you can talk to groups on all sides of you. So I mean, it's a perfect situation here where you can have groups completely around you as you lecture and everyone can hear you and see, see what you're presenting. Oh, what's that floating sound here? That is um, water sometimes hitting the ceiling and it's also echoes because we got room back there. This way. The hoses you look at are sump pump hoses. Now here's a calcite ridge right above you, over here behind you, and that's where the former floor layer area is. We can't touch it, but it's very brittle. But you get an idea of how high the mud was and how much work's gone on here. Oh, so you've taken out from that point down? Absolutely. We're talking six feet of mud. Correct. A lot of work. Wow. 46 degrees year round here, about 90% relative humidity. Here's one of the devices right here that they use for taking stuff out. And you put your buckets in here and it rolls on a wheel. Very ingenious. And here again, Brian Kleiss, he's a landscaper from uh, Appleton and he, he designed that. Here is the beautiful formation passage. And you can see the formations here. We just gotta be careful we don't hit any of them. <coughs> and uh, this here is sandbag, and we start to have a tourist walkway through here. And this water is coming out, and that's why we gotta keep the sump pumps going. But, Last Sunday, lo and behold, first time in over half a century caving, we started to have a wall give way here, and we figured there was a little lake here, so we thought, fine, let it come, we'll drain the room. Lo and behold, if you turn around and look, the water washed out all of this uh, passageway. We put sandbags in there, and there's a hidden river passage that we discovered there. It might clear out some of the passage for you. Well, it did. You can see the massive amount of erosion. Yeah. This here was all carved by the underground river. The full width of this for 15 to 30 feet. Wow. Now we'll go back and uh, 
Just watch the ceiling here. Straight ahead, we don't know. And to the right, where Mike Madden is, that's where it'll be the rest of the loop, a walking loop all the way around. And what a beautiful example of flowstone. That's like a fishtail. Correct, correct. And what is this, this fragile called here again, Gary? This is, the this is where we undermine it by removing the clay so we can have walking passage here. And we're seeing some stalactites up to four or five inches long up here. Exactly. There's hundreds of them in here. <laughs> So anyway, here you can see, uh, it's too bad, like I said, there's water here right now, but normally this is all nice, flat, and dry, and you walk along in the passageway here. The potential for this exists in a much greater passage, uh, the first 370 feet in Horseshoe Bay Cave in Door County. If it were all dug out, it would be probably twice as wide as this. This is great. This is wonderful. <laughs> Cave is like a construction project where you got your power lines, you got your sump pump hoses. We also do power washing of the walls where we want to remove all the fine particles of clay and mud like here that sticks to this and it brings out the true beauty of the rock. So at some point this will all get nicely power washed down and if you turn and look here you can see some of it has been done. See all the natural, the natural beauty of the rock? And uh, unlike a theater where everyone sits in one spot and the acts are brought to you, a show cave is just the opposite. It's where you walk through the stage settings. So it's the audience that moves, and the stage setting stays the same. So it's just the opposite of a theater. And we have over 9 million people a year that pay to go underground. And uh, the economic value is in excess of $144 million. One year in just the U.S. showcase alone. Gary? Yes. This was an underground river here that I'm walking in right now. Correct. And when you discovered this passageway, the mud was up to here? Correct. So you've taken out all this layer of mud and this is the sh top of the mud that we're seeing. And as original explorers, they had no choice, but they had to chip through to try to squeeze to get through here to see what they had. And since then we found out a much more effective way in terms of if we want to move volume to be able to have it for the public is to just take it straight down to the bedrock floor. So when you guys started at this, the mud, the, this was the only opening right here. That is correct. There's three or four inches right here. And now what's the significance of three, four inches? Think about it. Yes. What did we find in the Halloween room? Just a bats. Light. Yeah. Bats. bats. So yeah, bats could here. move through, and uh, that could be another entrance back there. We don't know. It could be up in the Halloween room. It's hard to say. When did you start digging out this part where I'm standing right now? It was after 1990, and we kept going. We've been doing it ever since 1984. Brian is uh, quite the inventor. A lot of cavers uh, invent unique tools to be able to excavate and remove sediment or do what is necessary in the development of a show cave. The little rooms that you see, the domes in here, when we were on our belly, we referred to this as rooms. And if you shine your light up here, you can see, if, and Mike, you might want to step back here and take a look at this too. This is a beautiful room. And I'm going to show you something else that's and really And all that's flowstone coming down. Correct. 
Now, this is unusual, what you're looking at, and I'm going to tell you why. We undermine this, but there was some air openings here, and you can see how the mud dripping and that, how it started calcite formed the inverted, almost like stalactite formations underneath here. And that's that's a drip cups, inverted from the underside. I might add, uh, like even up at Horseshoe Bay Cave, if that was ever developed, the, up to the entrance, you don't want any more than a 7% grade. The reason, there's a number of reasons. One, if you have over 7% grade, then you need steps. When you're going through a show cave, you want to be able to look at the natural beauty. You don't want to have to be worrying about stumbling and looking down where your feet are going. So that's why we try to keep all the grades under 7%. This cave here is so natural, you don't even have to worry about that. And then obviously insurance is a lot less in the show cave industry when you don't have steps. So flowstone is created with water highly enriched with Calcite. Calcite mineral. Yeah, being precipitated through the rock. And as it goes by, some of that precipitate stays there and that's flowing. Correct. And unlike a stalactite, it, it's more of a sheet that goes over the wall. Uh, and then we have also soda straws, which are stalactites that are hollow in the center. Very brittle, easy to break. Like I say, this is just an unbelievable cave right here. This is the largest in Mantua County. Uh, Sheboygan County, Kiwani County virtually have no caves. Brown County has some sea caves. And of course, Door County's got caves. So this is remarkable for this county. It's a shame that the water is, is up. The spring of the year, um, that's another thing I might point out. The best time of a year to go caving, believe it or not, is probably the fall. Summer is very good too. And winter, the first part of the winter is good, if you don't mind the surface deal. The worst time to go caving is the spring of the year. Now don't get me wrong, there's caves that are dry and it's perfect year round. And that's what's nice about this. Even for digging in caves, you could have 30 below zero outside. You come in, since it never is below 46 degrees, you don't come in here and you don't have to worry about frozen ground. You can dig and continue on. Great exercise. When you have this all power washed, this is like concrete. I mean, you look at this and you think, my gosh, this is just like nothing, you know? Um, but the water in it's good because that's what formed it in the first exactly, place. Exactly, exactly. So well, you're just taking you through a tour of Maribel Caves. We survived. We didn't get too muddy or uh, too wet. Yeah, as, as you might notice, it was a wet time. It is May 18th today, and we were told that fall tours are not nearly as damp. But it was exciting. We were walking through a foot of water at times and uh, saw some things I've never seen before. Yeah, well, I've never been in there before, so it was all new to me, too. So we're glad that you uh, watched us, and we would like to, to suggest you keep watching Sevastopol Television. And come visit Cherney Maribel Caves. Yes, it's near Manitowoc. The easiest way to get here would be take uh, Highway 43 from Green Bay South, and there's a sign uh, near Manitowoc that says Maribel Caves, and it's just off the highway, a very short, uh, short jaunt over the hill. Thank See, you for joining us. See you later.